Hello, Sandro. Hello. How are you, Sandro? Very good, thank you. And how are you? Okay, thank you. So, we can start our interview. Who is Sandro Azzopardi in Malta? Hello, I'm Sandro Azzopardi. I am a jeweler, also a renowned watchmaker. I am a Maltese, I am 52 years old. I was brought up in the industry of jewelry and watches, which was established by my late grandfather, great grandfather, Emanuele Azzopardi, in 1898. I was then also into the jewelry and watch industry from when I was a teenager, when I started working in the workshop when I was 14, 15 years old, learning the old techniques of jewelry making, where I also was lucky enough to have the opportunity to also learn the retail environment of the same industry with Seattle Valley and Sands for 16 years. I have a very strong passion for watches and for jewelry. I had at a later stage in life, which was in 1993, gone to Rome, where I had stayed there for three years, nearly four, where I had started the Italian way of jewelry making, especially the high end pave as diamond setting. Also, was lucky enough to have my first contacts with very important names, including Bulgari in Rome. I then came back to Malta in 1996 and I opened my first boutique, which was located in Slima in 1997, where I had straight away introduced Bulgari as a brand to Malta. And in 98 and 99, Jezele Kut, Vashan with others which followed, including Shome and Drigo Zorona. I had a good span of 15 years nearly in these in the Slima boutique, including retail outlets in Valletta and St. Radisson, St. Julian's, and had then went for a break from jewelry for a few, some time, and I was then working with a rather firm in Malta and also doing works in Hatton Garden in London, and a year and a half ago I opened and again, this time in a different way. I am very highly specialised in the buying, the selling, the trading, the pot exchanging, the polishing, the inspecting, the repairs and servicing, including certificate appraising of anything in jewellery, watch and object art related from any era. I studied jewellery history at Sotheby's in London, which gave me a different understanding to jewellery. And I also went for a watchmaking school for three weeks recently to be able to inspect, diagnose a watch from the inside as well as from the outside. The reason I did this was that although I had a long number of years experience in workshops of jewelry making and modification, design, etc., watch mechanics is a different issue. It is a different industry. And when one is buying or is dealing in a second-hand, pre-owned, used watch from any time frame, the inside, the quality of the movement, had it ever been serviced, had it ever seen seawater or water or condensation or humidity, had parts been changed, were they original parts? All these factors needed a different level of understanding, which I'm very lucky enough to have some more experience now and on a weekly basis it's getting more exciting. What I am doing is I am basically looking for items which maybe you do not use anymore, you do not enjoy anymore, and maybe you want to exchange it for something or obviously get cash for them and maybe enjoy it in a different way. I also am very happy to see what you have to value, to make sure that your items are well insured for the right value today. You'd be surprised on how certain items have appreciated with regards to the value, maybe jewelry watches or object down. What do you think uh, in the industry in today's world? So, very good question, thank you. Andrea, um, in, in today's world, it's not easy to... I do not use the word investment. Let me start from there. Um, I always prefer to use the word I speculate, I can recommend, it is my opinion, because we do not know what's going to happen with today's economical crisis that there is worldwide. But on the other hand, I can, I can help with 
giving my opinions with regards to what I believe is a good buy with today's market value. When one is purchasing a new watch or a new piece of jewellery, one is obviously paying the full price may be discounted from the retail price, which includes obviously the factor of, apart from the taxes obviously, the profit margin that the retailer is obliged to take. Maybe a discount. Why do I mention taxes? Because obviously in a pre-owned item, just like cars, just like antiques, it's tax for me to obviously pay as well, that way I can give you a better price. Plus, the market value of an item, when deducting 30, 35, even 40% margin, gives it its real market value, always depending on the condition, always depending whether it was worn or not, whether it has its original box, its original certificates or not. But, then there are watches, especially timepieces, I prefer maybe in this case, which, like 1960s Daytonas of Rolex, 1930s Jezele Kuti Reversals, the original vintage watches by Patek Philippe's by Vachon Constantins, which the value has increased by a lot. As an example, the 1957 Steve Rolex Sapphire recently fetched nearly 200,000 euros. Recently, a 1957 same year Omega Speedmaster recently sold for 150,000 euros. And these are items which are probably moot as well. And maybe you might have one of these at home and are not aware of the value. Apart from these two very popular iconic watches, there are loads more and I'm happy to see what you have to value for you and have them value at the right amounts. If you allow me, I will be more than happy to show you a few items which I am discussing about, which I am telling you about. And we will start from a few watches, which in this case, we we'll start from a Cartier tank, which were very popular in the 19, late 70s and early 80s. For one that wouldn't know, the Cartier tank was called a tank, because from the upper viewing, it, it is designed just like a First World War tank. So it was made in the early 1920s to commemorate the First World War. In this particular case, it is a silver gold-plated case with a wind-up movement. A wind-up movement is a mechanical movement which requires to be wound average once a day. Sometimes, maybe um, not so much often, depending on the kind of movement it has. So this particular watch, um, which is a new strap and a gold plated case on silver is priced at 700 euros. A 1930s Universal Genève, very important name in watches, were the first ones to introduce the dual compacts or the three compacts, better now. A Tissot Sea Star from the 1950s and also an Alpina gold wind up. These are all the classic vintage watches including some sports ones, like a Mortimer from the 1970s Diver's Watch, a Longines 1970 Super Compressor Diver High Beat, which was a very reliable and precise movement in that year. Another 1970 Roma Wind Up Stingate Chrono, which is a strong watch, precise, up to about 10 seconds a day, which is a very precise movement for that era. And Agera Perego Quartz, which was the first analog quartz movement, which was invented, created by Gerard Perego and Jojo Recourt together in 1970. Okay, so here we've gotten then also some jewelry and other related items, which, uh, which come from various eras. Starting from here, we've got Muti's gold filigree earrings dating to circa 1780 1790. I've also got Roman gold earrings which are circa 2000 years old. We've got Roman micro mosaic, which is very cleverly micro mosaic, is a mosaic made out of semi precious stones, which in this case are two butterflies. You can see the detail very clearly in the lower one. Small, special, semi precious stones cut and designed by the mosaic maker. There's a Victorian ring dating back to circa 
late 1700s pocket watches all 17 and 1800s this is a rolex bubble back which is a reference 2940 next one is a 1959 reference 6424 like new very well kept as well very important in the history of rolex because it was one of the first dials which also included the fluorescence which would light up illuminate at night in the dark the next one is a reference 4498 from circa 1955 which is an oversized watch with a coin edge um, circumference on the case this one is a Tudor Rolex Oyster date from the 1970s in steel and gold with part, a particular dial also with the fluorescence numerals and hands okay this is the, the treasure chest I went over recently where there's a whole amount, a variety of items which are including pocket watches, antique Maltese jewellery with diamonds set on silver and gold, variety of Maltese silver and foreign silver one, including an ink blotter which was dated 1957, Seattle Barney Sands in the very beginning, including, very interestingly, uh, this case which says Ulta Horse Show 1923 first prize which opens up with an engraving on the back of a pocket watch which is probably the winner of 1923's Horse Show which is an Omega pocket watch quite a lovely gift over here are two carriage clocks both are from the early 19th century circa 1850 London 1830 Paris this is made by Dent which is a car shop which I was going to open the back and I'm going to put an advance the minute hand a bit as it is a chimer in other words it chimes it strikes the hours in this case it's going to strike three times any second that was an extra one because of the half an hour prior previously because I put an advance it chimes the number of hours and also every half an hour it will chime once and this one was made in a similar mechanism by Garnier who was also the clockmaker for King Louis so starting from the bottom here we've got the collection which is mostly my personal collection of Omega Seamasters and Speedmasters the Speedmaster known for being also known as the Moonwatch which was the watch which NASA had officially tested and qualified for man-made missions, space missions and there's also a Seamaster limited edition Sochi, there's also Speedmasters Mark 4 and 5. Interesting for us Maltese, there's one Omega Deville in the bottom, the rectangular one, which was designed by a certain Andrew Grima with Maltese parents, who was also by appointment the jeweler to the royal family in the 70s. And instead of using a normal glass, he used stones. In this case, it's a quartz to read time through. We have a Maradona limited edition Hublot watch together with a Chanel Breitling. We also have a Ferrari Hublot limited edition watch, which is quite a spectacular watch for whoever appreciates obviously car racing as it is a lightweight with a flyback skeletonized movement. Here we have an Ulisse Nardin chronograph maritime maxima maritime, um, which is very collectible as regards to the maritime watch collectors. A Frank Muller, a very rare one with an enameled blue dial, which is a full calendar chronograph. Two Jezelikut reversos, which were first designed in 1931 until today made in the same way. There is no need for introduction of Rolex, being the first waterproof watches. Nowadays, waterproof is a terminology not allowed to be used in Swiss watchmaking. The oyster was called the oyster because it protects the movement like an oyster would protect the pearl. We have a good variety of pre-owned Rolexes which are all tested, serviced and polished according to the requirements by the client. Here we have a Bulgari Diagonal rubber and steel watch. Interestingly, a Bremont and a Breitling next to each other, two rivals in the aviation um, industry for watches obviously. Two other Rolexes and we move on a little bit to jewellery now. Where I'm also very interested to part exchange, buy, sell, trade, um, especially Bulgari jewellery and any other jewellery that is obviously of a certain level of jewellery making.
So I am now about to start opening the case, a back case of a Rolex Oyster to also remove the bracelet and then check the reference number which in this case is a 1500 and it's the year which I'm going to find out soon through the year of manufacture, the case number is how we find out the year of manufacture. Obviously, this is not something that I would recommend to do unless you are, have some experience in the industry. So the reference number is a 559 starting. So that would be dated to circa 559, we're looking at 1978. Wow, that's a very well conditioned watch for that era, for that year. We are now going to open the back case so that I can see obviously what Okay, what the condition of the movement of this watch is, if it is a good one, or maybe not. It's always a surprise sometimes or a mystery. The important thing is not to have, obviously, you want a movement that has not been corroded. Let me start from there, from that era, very important, which, wow, as you can see in this case, there is some rust in the cases on the case, but that does not worry me. There's a movement in this case which is in a fantastic condition given it's obviously year 1978 there is patina on the dial which was once silvered but it has turned to a kind of creamy champagne color which is wow I have to say quite an amazing color the condition of the case is good so if this is now being closed again which now we're going to do obviously a slight cleaning for the movement, do whatever it requires and I wish to obviously thank you very much for your attention, thank you Mota Web News, thank you Andrea for this opportunity and I hope to see you soon at the boutique. Thanks again, good afternoon, bye bye.